Hey, today I'm gonna to be reviewing the user experience for onboarding to Coinbase. Coinbase is one of the most popular cryptocurrency exchanges and they just went public in April of this year. Now this is part of an overall series that I'm doing where I'm looking at multiple crypto exchanges. I'm showing the user journey for each of them and trying to reveal significant pain points and friction areas along the way for all of them. And I'm trying to come up and, and show basically uh, these, these design decisions that can be made by product designers in, our, in this crypto space in order to improve the UX and to onboard more users in general. Now, going back to Coinbase, Coinbase took only 30 minutes for me to go from uh, fiat into crypto ownership. And that was by far the best that I looked at across all the different exchanges. Some of the others took one to two full business days just for me to be able to buy crypto in that account. So let's get into the journey for Coinbase. I'm going to show you each of the steps that it takes along the way and then try to uh, reveal and tease out some of the pain points that I also experienced. Okay, here's the user journey for onboarding to Coinbase. As you can see, I have captured each step here with a tile. And then when I scroll over it, it's gonna be an animated, like a movie clip of each step that it took me to go from fiat into crypto. Now there are four major phases here. There are sign up, uh, which is just basic account creation that we'd be used to with something like Instagram and Facebook. Verify, you need to verify your identity. This is because the US government imposes KYC and AML regulations on Coinbase. And fund is the next is the third phase where you have to set up some sort of payment method, perhaps deposit fiat money into the Coinbase account. And then also buy is the last and final phase of this where we are taking our fiat money and actually purchasing crypto assets with it. So let's dive into the sign up phase. So sign up is really just like you'd expect with a few caveats. So the first step is to click, go to coinbase.com and click sign up. The next is to put in information like first and last name, email, state, and then agree to some terms and conditions down here. Now you have to wait for email verification, but of course, as many of you know, this is usually instant. Uh, obviously a bot is serving these emails on the back end and uh, you have to go to your personal email and then verify that, and, and now your account is active. It takes you to the next screen where you're setting up two-factor authentication or um, SMS verification. So you type in your personal phone number, and then you have to input a six-digit PIN from here. Again, nothing new at this point until we get to here. Now, during this account creation or sign-up phase, Coinbase does something different than other many of the other Web2 services, I, as I mentioned before, Facebook and Instagram. It's going to start asking for KYC information. So you'll see that here in a second, but first it needs your citizenship. And it says here at the top, Coinbase is legally required to collect this information. If you're a citizen of more than one country, please pick one. Now the next step is, this is where it gets really different, right? I'm, again, I'm giving my first and last name date of birth, social security number, residential address, what will Coinbase, what will you use Coinbase for? Where are you getting the funds and what's your employment status? Now this is very personal information and it's not something that many users are going to be used to giving away. The whole reason behind this is, a, as I said before, is that the US government imposes KYC on Coinbase. Why? Because Coinbase can hold fiat money in fact, Coinbase is a bank. It's very similar to something like Chase or Bank of America. And so if you were setting up a Chase or Bank of America account, you would probably expect to have to give them this personal information like your address and social security number. But I don't think a lot of people are gonna realize that when they first come to this site, they're like, hey, I'm here just to get crypto. And they're not going to understand that it, it, uh, that it, that it requires more uh, delicate private information than uh, just a normal Web2 signup. The last step before account creation here is, again, more information that Coinbase, it's saying Coinbase is legally required to collect. So how much crypto do you expect to trade per day? And then what industry do you work in? Now, all crypto exchanges have to collect this KYC information. If they don't they're, and they're serving U.S. customers, then this is illegal. 
Um, but I do want to point out that Coinbase collects some extra information. So um, again, uh, all, co all crypto exchanges have to collect things like date of birth, residential address, social security number. Um, but Coinbase goes a step further and they ask about what will you use Coinbase for? What is your source of funds and employment status? as well as how much do you expect to trade per year and what industry do you work in. The other crypto exchanges that I looked at did not ask for this information, so I just wanted to call that out here that Coinbase seems to be going slightly beyond what is the minimal requirements for KYC, and they're asking these other more qualitative questions about um, how you'll use Coinbase and where your funds are coming from. The next phase, phase two, is verify, and this is about account verification here. So you go into, once you've logged into the Coinbase account, you go and you click verify ID, and it comes up with uh, which, uh, which ID you want to verify with, and so I'm going to click driver's license, and then it gives you a way to upload this uh, this document, right? So I chose driver's license, and so now I need a way to give Coinbase um, or allow them to capture these details on my driver's license. So they can choose from webcam, mobile camera, or file upload. I chose webcam here. And now it's a matter of following this on screen process where I hold up my driver's license to the webcam, take photo and it captures the front, and then the same thing can be said about the back. Once the front is captured, now I turn it around and we capture the back of the driver's license. So once I've captured the front and back of my driver's license, I now get this message saying, we're verifying your ID, your identity is being verified, we will email you once your verification has been completed. And this email came five minutes from now. It would be nice if Coinbase had put a message on there saying that, you know, this process is automated or this process usually takes five to 10 minutes, just so I had an idea of whether or not to come back later in the day or to sit and wait for my verification to complete. One thing I really liked about Coinbase is that they had many different methods to upload the ID document. I have webcam, mobile camera upload, and file upload. Of course, I chose webcam, but I do want to call out the mobile camera is a really nice flow where it allows you to, it sends a link to your phone. You get an, a mess, an SMS message with a link. You click on that link and it basically, it, it opens your camera so that you can use your smartphone camera to take a picture of the front and back of your driver's license, which I think is going to be a lot easier and more intuitive for people um, to use their smartphone camera as opposed to webcam. The next phase, the third phase is called fund. This is where we are setting up our Coinbase to take in US fiat deposits so that we can then purchase them in the final phase, phase four. Now, this is really where Coinbase excels and shines over the other crypto exchanges. This is a lengthy, frustrating, confusing process in, in other exchanges like Crypto.com and Kraken, but Coinbase makes it extremely simple. I can do everything just on one interface screen right here. You'll see it in a second. So the first step is to, I click add payment method, and it comes up with a list of, I guess, what's that, four or five? Yeah, four different options for different payment methods. They got bank account, PayPal, debit card, and bank wire. And bank account is there, and it's recommended at the top. So I went ahead and clicked that. And it takes you into something called Played. And these are just pop-ups on the same screen. And Played is an external service that Coinbase is using. Played connects your bank account to applications. So Played is this external service that's connecting my Fidelity bank account to Coinbase so that I can transfer funds from Fidelity to Coinbase seamlessly. So as you can see, all that I have to do is uh, search for the name of my bank, click on it, and in the next screen here, I'm gonna type the, my username and password in that I use for my fidelity.com login. Then there's a text verification where you put in a six digit code just like before, or maybe that was five digits. And then you select the account number 
or the account within my greater Fidelity account, you can have multiple checking and savings accounts, you know? So then you select that account, which you want to link to Coinbase. Now this is, I'm gonna show you later in a comparative video, I'm gonna uh, in detail compare this funding phase from Coinbase and the other exchanges, but really Coinbase does amazing here. The other exchanges take one to two full business days for me to deposit crypto cash, or sorry, fiat cash into the exchange. Here with Coinbase, it is absolutely instant. They shift the mental model because other crypto exchanges say you need to deposit US cash into, um, into your USD wallet on this exchange. So you, it's like you initiate this transfer and then you have to wait for it to land and then you can buy crypto with it. But Coinbase, again, it shifts the mental model and it's just linking the account. So now the account's linked and I can make instant crypto purchases, which you'll see here in a second in the last phase, uh, using my linked bank account. And again, it can't be understated how much of a better user experience this is than other crypto exchanges. All right, so tagging on to phase three, let's go to the last phase, phase four, which is actually buying cryptocurrency. So we now have our, our bank account linked to Coinbase and we can go in, we can select buy crypto. We're gonna get a pop-up here where we can select the type of crypto asset and enter the amount that we want. Here, I think I chose $100. So you see here at the bottom, here's the crypto asset and then pay with and then Fidelity. This is the Fidelity bank account that I just linked in the last phase. If I clicked on Fidelity right there, it would come up with a list of the other payment methods that I could do, which are PayPal, credit card, and bank wire. And um, just saying uh, PayPal and, and sorry, debit card are also very seamless and easy to add um, as well as payment methods. The one thing about debit card is that there's a, it's like a 750 or $1,000 purchase limit per day. So if you're going for high volume, you're going to need to go with another payment option. And then bank wire is their final payment method. And that's what all the other crypto exchanges use. And there's nothing wrong with bank wire, except that it just takes longer and it's more cumbersome. With bank wire, you have to put in your, uh, you have to manually connect the um, the the Coinbase bank with your Fidelity bank by putting in account and routing numbers, and you know you just have to manually copy these details. It's just not a good experience, and so I was very happy to see that Coinbase has many different payment methods. But anyway, getting back to this buy phase here, so we just select Ethereum that we want to purchase. We're doing a hundred dollars. Pay with Fidelity, and you go to this confirmation screen right here, which it shows you the um, the price per ETH, US dollars per ETH, uh, how much I'm purchasing, Coinbase charges a transaction fee total, and then we can buy it. And it's loading. And I'm going to get back to this in a second. This kind of looks like an error message here. And once you refresh, you'll see that you have those funds in your account now. I have about $97 worth of Ether in my account, right? It's $100 less the transaction fee, so that's what I would expect. I wanna go back to this um, order preview screen right here. You look right here, trade your ETH instantly while we wait for your funds. You can send your ETH in up to four days. This requires some explanation. So this is an instant, I. I basically, I linked my bank account and then instantly went to buy crypto. And um, I now I, I own uh, about $97 worth of Ether. This is all instant. It happens in less than five minutes. What is happening, and this is because there is this like auto, this instant trade deposit that Coinbase is doing in the background that makes for a much better user experience. This bank method that I connected above using Played, as you saw before, is something called ACH transfer. And so really what's happening in the background is, yes, I'm linking my bank account um, via an ACH method, and it takes actually three to four business days for um, a transfer to go through uh, from Fidelity into Coinbase. And so Coinbase, like the other exchanges are doing, could make you wait three to four business days until that money lands, and then you can use that landed money to buy 
cryptocurrency. But Coinbase does something extremely smart here. They let you go ahead and buy crypto before the actual transfer settles, before the ACH transfer settles. And this is why it is so much more instant and seamless to buy crypto on Coinbase as opposed to these other crypto exchanges that I've been talking about. Coinbase shows here that they really understand the speed to purchase is one of the most important aspects that an exchange can offer. When you show up to Coinbase and you're signing up for an account, it is like the user knows they want to buy crypto with it, right? And so the, the faster that you can make that happen, the better. So let's break that last part of the sentence down. You can send your ETH in up to four days. So what happens is that, yes, now you do own that ETH, but you can't transfer it off of the Coinbase platform until after the ACH transfer settles, which is generally f four days. So once I bought, I bought this and then four days later, I got an email from Coinbase saying that your account balance has been updated to $97 or something like that. So they're basically just telling me that now we've, un we've unlocked these funds so that you can um, transfer this off of the platform if you want, could send it to another exchange or could send it to a hardware wallet or other DeFi wallet like MetaMask. Okay, going back to this loading screen here, I got, this was really the one significant usability issue that I noticed during this Coinbase journey. This is recalculating bank volume. So I clicked buy now, I get this loading bar, and then I get this amber message that says recalculating bank volumes. And I wasn't really sure what that even meant. It says we are currently recalculating bank volumes. You should refresh before proceeding. So I refresh the screen, and I'm like, well, what the heck did it go through? And when I refreshed, I immediately saw that I had about $97 of Ether. So I did know that the purchase went through, but I never got a formal confirmation message saying that this order had gone through. So I could see that um, other users might get confused by this and potentially go in and make a second purchase, essentially buying um, the same amount of crypto twice. So that was the user journey for onboarding to Coinbase. I showed all the steps from going from fiat money into cryptocurrency ownership. And again, Coinbase had by far the best user experience um, out of all of the other crypto exchanges that I looked at, uh, like crypto.com, Gemini, and Kraken. And this was essentially because of this phase three that I talked about, the funding phase, where you have to set up a payment method and deposit funds into your account. Why did Coinbase excel? Well, first of all, Coinbase had used something called Played, which connects your bank account to Coinbase. And this was the most seamless process for linking my bank account. Um, I, st I could stay on the coin one Coinbase screen and I kept getting pop-ups from Played saying like, uh, like what's your bank account name? What uh, are the credentials for your bank account login? And what which account within Fidelity do you want to link? This was so easy, it took only one minute. And when I compare this to Kraken and Crypto.com, which were bank wires, the only deposit method I had were bank wires, where you have to go into Fidelity, you have to link a new bank account to your Fidelity account. You have to put in the account number and routing number manually from the bank wire details that you get from the crypto exchange and it's just a mess you're switching between different browsers you're having to copy and paste things and the bank wire takes like one full it took for kraken it took one full day for the funds to land and for crypto.com it took two full days so th this is a, a, a massive amount of time to make the user wait whereas coinbase just says like now you can do everything instantly the second area where Coinbase really excels is that they don't require the ACH transfer to settle before you can buy crypto. So an ACH transfer takes three to four business days for it to actually transfer from Fidelity into Coinbase, but Coinbase lets you, um, they see the balance in your bank account and they let you buy crypto instantly. So you're instantly an owner of the crypto. They drastically reduce the amount of time that users have to wait before crypto ownership. Thank you.